And again, it really comes down to how much Brad Holmes believes in Houston to kind of bring that up again, because I have the video here and I want you guys to kind of, we can react to it because I, I believe this video is, was super, super interesting. It was Nick, Nick Baumgartner, who again, he's the senior writer at the athletic. He talks all about football. He does great stuff. And then Colton Pouncey also works for the athletic covers the Detroit lions. we got to get him on one time. He'd be a great guest. Yeah, definitely. Um, but this is kind of him and, and him talking about James Houston. I thought this was super interesting. So check this out and we'll, uh, we'll give our thoughts on it. Nation, as he's talking about reader, he kind of mentions James Houston. And he's like, a lot of people keep forgetting about that guy uh, just because he was injured and he had eight sacks as a rookie. And that's a guy that we still like. So don't forget about James Houston. So you add a James Houston back into the mix. Then you add Marcus Davenport into the mix. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, with Josh Pascal, a third year leap and Holmes always tells us, you know, that third year is so important. That's the year where you can finally tell if a guy is ready or not. We'll see if Pascal can make that leap. Aiden Hutchinson's already there. So it's like, I think he feels better about the edge position than a lot of people think. You know, the mid, mid conversation, as he's talking about reader, oh, he kind of mentions. That's the, okay. So he basically, to kind of summarize that, he was kind of inferring that Brad Holmes, there's, there's, there's probably, there's a world where he believes in what they have more than people think at edge. And there's a, there's that, possibility that he just sits there and goes you know what let's take an offensive lineman let's take a wide receiver let's take a corner and maybe maybe we'll take an edge somewhere in the middle middle of the draft or maybe even late in the draft but what what just to put that scenario in your head because again this won't be the first time fellas i didn't mention running back in the first round at all and he took jameer gibbs so Mm -hmm. there is a world in which this happens i i do believe oh man but just process that for a second. What would be your reaction? What's your what's your thought on that theory? Um, do you guys remember last? To it. Do you remember last off season? It's deja vu. It's it's deja vu. Last off season when Brad went into the off season and said, "I love the guys we have. I'm sticking with them. I think these guys are going to make a jump this year. We believe in them." We think these guys can go out there and produce for us. We're a big fan of the guys in our building right now in this defensive line room. And we're rolling with them this year. And guess what? Outside of it, outside of Aiden Hutchinson and Ali McNeil, no one produced for you. No one pro- you didn't have anyone to produce for you. You had a guy with 11 and a half sacks and Aiden Hutchinson or whatever, 11 sacks. And you had a guy with Lee McNeil with five and a half. And after that, you had, I don't know if you even had someone come close to it. It's deja vu. <laughs> the commish, maybe. And the commish was like the like you had <laughs> one and a half. Char- who did you have? Charles Harris, who he had coming in as your yeah. your bookend. Benito a got a sack or two. Isaiah Bugs got in there a little bit. You, you and thought Charles Harris? He, yeah, the linebackers had yeah. more sacks yeah. than all of those bottom guys combined. So, like, you had Charles Harris going in as your number two pass rusher, and he was a scratch in over half of your games this year. You don't trust these guys in your room. What are we talking about here? Go get us some guys. Go get me some guys. May I do understand a little bit the year two to year three jump because that there is things that like Ali McNeil just did it last year or or, or Ali McNeil did it. So like you've seen that with him, but like, listen, you need, you need to produce now. You can't say, Oh, we love these guys. I think they're going to make the jump. I don't want to hear. I think I want, I know they're going to make the, I want them to make the jump. Go get me someone. To me, it's like, I don't care about the first round. First three rounds, go get me a guy you can throw in there with with um, Marcus Davenport, James Houston, and let's see. Like, at least give me something. Don't yeah. leave the first three rounds without another edge rusher. Like I said, I want a revamped de- edge de- edge room, a revamped one. I've been saying it since November. You, like, yeah. it needs to be revamped. I don't care if it's a Marcus Davenport, Lucas. I know you're like, ah, I don't care who it is. I just want someone in the building that wasn't someone different that was in the building from last year. Just give me new faces. Yeah. Maybe someone will do something. I'll go in there and, and run a couple plays. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like when you have a nightmare in the middle of the night and you run into your mom's room and you're like, mom, mom, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. She's like, it's okay. We have James Houston. We have Marcus Davenport. We have Josh Pascal. Everything's gonna be okay. But you know, you know, right when you go back to bed, when you go back to bed, the nightmare's still there. Nothing's happening. And it's like, how long? I understand if you don't want to take, you don't want to take Darius Robinson in the first round. Maybe you don't want to take an Adiza Isaac or somebody like that in the second round. But if you start passing up on like 
the Mohammed Camaros of the world in the third round, and you're just you're going to try to find your Amon Ross St. Brown with a fourth round defensive end on the defensive side of the ball. I don't know. Like, I still think they're a team that is very well in Super Bowl contention. But <laughs> if you look back to your point, Boomer, look at last season. Last season where they, they wanted to keep all their guys, their homegrown product. Well, they weren't the hunted. They were the ones that were hunting. Now everybody knows their weaknesses, how to how to game plan against the Lions. They know that sh- those motherfuckers can't get to the quarterback, and that makes their corners life even harder. So if we can just find a way to just re- don't get any passers against the Detroit Lions, we have a chance because then What's- that can flip the side of the ball offensively and they can control the clock. You don't do that, man. It's just like. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's asinine it's it's i don't want to call brad holmes ignorant by any means because i think that's the last thing that he is but right. i think the idea of walking out of the first three rounds without a defensive end or adding more somebody else in free agency and thinking you're okay i think that's a little ignorant it's 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 insane i'm just gonna an obvious thing that everyone always says insanity you're just trying the same thing over and over and over and hoping it's the, the expecting the same result like a different result and yeah. you're just getting the same thing it's eventually like i know you might like these guys you drafted some of these guys i know we're not in the building to see what they're doing maybe they, they they're, there's something that, that they see that we don't it's just again i just want a revamp of a defensive line or just a full revamp I don't want John Kaminsky in the NFC Championship game to have to be my number two yep. edge rusher. I don't yep. want Bruce Irvin to have to go in there for a week and be your the guy to go out there and get you. I hey, want solid hit on Derek Carr. Like I like the commission is our is our is a depth piece. I like him as a, he 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 stood out as a depth piece. He was great as a depth piece. He's not a well, starter. He's a dog he's, as a depth. Yes, piece. he's not Nate Hutchinson. Go get me someone else on the other side of that. We're in the NFL. Yeah, I, I I don't know how. And I don't think I think Brad would agree with this, hopefully. And this, I don't mean this like disrespectfully, but if you didn't watch the Lions last season and you didn't see that Aiden Hutchinson uh, Aiden Hutchinson clearly needs help, you're either Stevie Wonder or you're just an idiot. So I like that's where I'm at with it. Like I, although I get, so if if he believes that James Houston is the solution, okay, we'll see. (laughs) Like all right, but here's the thing though: when you take that risk, there will there could be consequences. Like and that's that's where like for example, the Lions are in a win now window. We believe this team can win a Super Bowl. If James, if if not having help for Aiden is a reason they go down. Guess who's catching the most heat? It's going to be Brad Holmes, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and I think rightfully so. Yeah. So it, again, if he if Houston is that player, and then Brad looks like a genius, you know. But at the end of the day, it's just I don't I I just can't imagine that. I it, unless you, he really believes that Davenport is going to have his first healthy season and be an absolute monster. And James Houston can kind of fill in when he needs to fill in, but I just don't think that's true. I I think this Lions defensive line needs an, a, another edge. They need like a bookend. They need somebody that isn't just someone you play on third down. It's somebody that first, second, third down can play against the run, be a solid run defender, and also when it's in pass passing situations, can be an absolute menace. Maybe not to Aiden Hutchinson's level, but win one on ones. Right, you're going to have yep. plenty of them with DJ Reader and Aiden. So, you know, yeah, they got three guys. They got Aiden. Aline McNeil, DJ Reader, it's a great trio there, but they need somebody else. And I, I just don't believe in my heart that Davenport is the ultimate solution. I know we've brought up the potential, which I think is interesting to have that discussion, but I just don't know if he could say healthy. And James Houston, that's a sample size that if you're banking on, I mean, give me the lottery numbers, man, too, while you're at it. Because I might need to, I, I, if you're winning on that, man, give me lottery numbers because that's tough to, I mean, a sack a game. I mean, do you, do you, do you guys really believe And please the chat chime in? Do you think that James Houston can be a double digit sack guy in the NFL? Not that that's the ultimate, you know, yes or no, but just talk about his potential. I think James Houston's a good player, but I don't know if he can be an every down guy, uh, somebody that for, you know, the next five years can can be right with Aiden with with sacks. He could, yeah. but he's got to he's got to he's got to have a hell of a, a not just what he did his rookie year, but he's got to continue that over a seventeen game season. Which 
I don't know, fellas. I don't know. Houston, I'm kind of I'm split between because my eyes didn't lie. I do think we there's saw, we, we saw Houston, we saw the talent, but then there's the other yeah. side. It's like that's hard to do. You know, mm, that, that's sure. extremely hard to do. There okay, so there there is, and, and this is how I look at it. Like with James Houston, I think he has a chance to be very productive on this football team, but I don't think it's like an every, it's a third down. It's a, it's a situational thing to where he's going to be very effective in spurts and in different moments throughout the season. Like to, to my, to my thought process and kind of how I look at this, it's think about if you bring a Darius, say, let, let's example, you draft Darius Robinson, you get an edge, right? Or you trade up and get someone. Let's just, Darius Robinson is, is, is an example. Now, in my yeah. opinion, that Darius Robinson's that bookend to Aiden Hutchinson. Now, like, hey, when you need a situation like, yes, Darius Robinson's an at, he's athletic. Yeah, he might be a little slower on the on the edge, and he could play in a little bit. But all right, you need a pass rush. You need to get to the quarterback. You need to send everyone. All right, let's get James Houston in now. Now you have that. You have options. You have different kind of things you can do to kind of throw at defenses. And then you still have Marcus Davenport to throw out there. You still have some of these young guys. It's just kind of getting that, I, I, just getting someone someone different in there. That you well, know has that ceiling they need, to where, hey, you can at least produce and you have a ceiling at the same time and we can develop you. But we need someone consistent in there all the time. Like you can't have a Charles Harris as your number two going into the season again this year who was a scratch for nine games this year. You can't be in that situation again. Well, and that's a Marcus Davenport injury situation. That's how I real, look at this. Real quick, Luke, I want to make sure I clear this up because I, I think double-digit sacks a little aggressive. But even if I say eight to ten sacks, if he can be – because that's what you need. You, you're, Aiden's already going to be your double-digit sack guy. He's going to get your 15, 16 sacks, whatever, whatever the number you think you'll get. But my point is, like, for a guy that's really a pass rush specialist, you're measuring him on sacks strictly. Mm-hmm. Because he's yes. not going to make plays in the run game, at least I don't think at this point. So that's why that's kind of where I was going with that point. Is like, yeah. do you have faith, you know, eventually for him to kind of be an every down guy, or is he just kind of a gimmicky? You throw him in on third down, which is certainly great. I'm not I'm not diminishing that, but I prefer somebody like when you look at the best defensive lines in the league. I mean, bring up Houston for example. What they just did, Daniel Hunter, Will Anderson, they'll be on the field every single play. You know, like every mm-hmm. every down. So like those guys are bookend, man. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's guess I guess my ideal defensive line, not somebody that's kind of gimmicky. No offense yeah. to Houston, I know it sounds bad, but no, but that that's Houston is like an elite player to have on a rotation. Like you look at the Philadelphia Eagles and how right. they can just rotate Hassan Reddick and Montez Sweat or not Montez Sweat, Josh Sweat whenever they really wanted to. I think yeah. the Lions don't even need like a Will Anderson or a Daniel Hunter. I'm not saying that that's what you're saying. They need like a George Call Laftis, an AJ Espinosa. Right. Just a guy that when he has an ability to get one on ones, like you said, Jeff, he can, which is going to be consistently, just win those because you don't need to get a 12, 13 sacks. Because when you add in what this offense is going to be doing, you just need to be able to do your job consistently. It's good NFL tackles. And I think if you get a guy that is just very, to Booner's point with Darius Robinson, has a low floor that could develop into a potentially high ceiling, that's all they need. So Hopefully one day, if the Chiefs they they can't resign everybody they want, they let George Carl Laftis walk because I think he's the the definition of a Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell guy. But I don't think that's happening. So if they can get somebody like that, I think that answers all the problems on the defensive line. That's why I'm out on the the Chop Robinson thing. Yeah. Is I know Chop has a high ceiling and he could be really good. But in in those scenarios, like if you do think James Houston can can be that specialist in certain situations especially on third downs or pat you know passing situations right. when you need to get to the quarterback where do you fit chop robinson into that defensive line then like it's either chop robinson no, or james you houston so you just don't have that spot for it and it's like if you if you truly think james houston is that guy which i think he can be like i i do think i don't think he can be a three down uh player where he's going to be out there all three downs and it's affecting the game but i do think in certain situations when you need to get to the quarterback he's that guy where do you put like where does that come in for a Chop Robinson? So it's like if if, if Brad really does think that he can roll with James Houston and and Marcus Davenport and that's it, then that takes out to me a Chop Robinson out of the picture, and then it leaves more so like a Darius Robinson in or like trading up and going to get someone to where you need a guy that's going to be out there more downs than just uh, on pass rushes. So that that's where I'm leaning towards. I just again, I just want depth. I just want more guys. Yes. Yeah. And just, it's just not build it at, up. And I want to make this also clear by saying you want depth and you want more help on the defensive line doesn't like diminish what Houston is, which is a, a good player. 
Because look at Philly. I mean, Philly has a defensive line. They just went out and got – they re-signed Josh Sweat, but they also got Bryce Huff. Like, they're continuing to add, even though they have a, they have some pretty good guys on their defensive line. Like, you can never have enough of them. So, when you look at – when you look at Davenport in, in Houston, you're like, oh, okay. But need you need more. You know, like, you just you, – again – We'll see. I think the draft's going to be very interesting to kind of see the mindset of Brad. But I, and that's where I'm at with the Chop Robinson thing. I, I want a guy that can be an every down guy, or at least most downs. That that can be just as good as he is. Not maybe necessarily the same, but be. I mean, just be a formidable run defender and yep. be a pass rusher. Like that's I, I feel like the top edge, those top edge rushers and a guy like Darius. I think those are who like that's those are guys every yeah. down guys, and that's where. That's all. I'm leaning towards. You know what yeah. kills me, boys, about Chop is he had what two sacks this year? Do you know who those two sacks came against? Fucking UMass, oh. UMass, both of them, both of them. So if you take Stop. out the University of Massachusetts game for my for Chop Robinson, that man has zero sacks on the season, zero, and he gets mm-hmm. bullied in the run game. I I don't I do not see it. I do not well, see it. That- 